Hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. And I'm watching and waiting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home in a pre-tribulation rapture. I hope you're happy, healthy, and well, and that you have what you need. Guys, I've got one verse here for us today. First Corinthians 1.18. This is awesome. It's talking about some of the things you've heard me say in the past of why do the unbelievers and the lost, why don't they understand the Bible and the preaching of the cross and the parables and, and, and all the stories that are in the Bible? How come they can't figure it out or it doesn't make sense to them? In fact, anyone preaching the gospel to an unbeliever, we sound like fools. We sound like idiots, like we're crazy to them. Do you ever feel like that as a Christian? Do you feel like the world's against you, like nobody understands you except maybe another Christian? Come over here with me and let's talk about it today. Why don't you go get something to eat? Why don't you get a drink or a snack or whatever it is and bring it back over here with me and sit down and let's have a nice Bible study. There's not much time left. It is time to fly. It is time to fly. You know how we say, keep looking up and we'll see you up top. We're about to be up top, guys. So we're going to start our video out like that today. I'm going to give you that, that positive reinforcement and encouragement. And enthusiasm today 1st Corinthians 1 18 if you want to get your Bible we'll open up with prayer and we'll just have a nice chat about the Lord he's good he's here the Holy Spirit is here he's with me and I'm praying for you guys so continue to send me emails and write comments let me know what you think let me know what's going on with you you know let me know what to pray about you guys continue to pray for me and I really appreciate that and I wanted to say thank you right there it means the world to me let's go to him in prayer and give thanks and we'll get started Dear Jesus, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come out here to brag on you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I pray for each and every listener that this message reach them, that it speak to their heart, and that they have what they need today, Jesus. We know time has run out. We know that you have your hand on the doorknob and you're turning it, and you're about to snatch us away, Father. We believe we love you so much and we owe you everything for you given your life for ours. We don't deserve that, Father, but we thank you for it again today. Please continue to provide for us in these last moments, Jesus. Please don't leave us alone. We know that you won't. When we get down, please speak to our hearts, Jesus, so that we turn back to you and nothing else. Amen. So, guys, 1 Corinthians 1.18, it says... For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Think about what Paul is saying here. Isn't it to the church of Corinth? The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Well, we're not fools because we're taking, we're taking what he says now instead of waiting till the tribulation. We're, we're exercising good judgment if you want to call it that we're all sinners but we're trying to make a decision now and choose jesus so that we don't we don't go through his wrath what you're seeing on the earth right now is god's wrath it's his judgment but it is not the tribulation or the great tribulation that hasn't happened yet let me be really really clear there is a rapture i believe it's a pre-tribulation rapture there are no seals, there are no scrolls, seals, or trumpets yet. None of that has happened. I have to be very, very clear today. This is God's judgment that has come upon the earth. And there's going to be many that don't understand it because they're fools, because they're lost. When you accept Jesus into your heart and believe that he died on the cross for you and rose on the third day, that's the gospel. You invite him into your heart, repent of your sins, you confess them to him, and say, Jesus, please save me. I'm a wretched sinner. I need you. You want to have eternal life. After that, you believe and your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But Paul here is, listen to this excerpt that I got. I believe it's off BibleReference.com. Some of the different tools that I use while I'm doing Bible study and fact-checking things. Check this out. Paul now begins to expand on his statement from the end of verse 17, that Christ did not send him to focus on words of eloquent wisdom as he preached the gospel, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Paul divides the world into two groups of people, those who are perishing and those who are being saved. Who does that sound like? This is way back then. This is us and this is them right now. 
and there's still time to choose Jesus. Those perishing are destined for eternity apart from God, while those being saved are destined for an eternity of sharing in God's glory. To the first group, the perishing, the cross of Christ is folly. The original Greek term used here is moria, from the same root word forming English words such as moron. In blunt terms, Paul is saying to the unsaved world, those who preach the gospel look like idiots. Broadly speaking, ungodly people think believers and their faith are stupid. You notice how I'm reading this to you, that all the noise is picking up out here? I apologize for that. In Paul's day, the cross remained in widespread use by the Romans as a means of public execution. It was a symbol of shameful crimes and powerlessness before the irresistible Roman Empire. The cross of Christ was not foolish in the Greek and Roman culture as a result of atheism. In truth, they believed in all kinds of gods and sorted them by power. They wielded over nature and humanity. The cross of Christ was foolish to the pagan culture because Jesus Christ rejected by his own people and crucified like any other common criminal by the Roman machine. This is a pagan culture. I'm trying to get you to understand if you're saved, the cross, the Bible, everything is going to make sense because you're going to have the Holy Spirit, you're going to have your helper with you. This is a pagan culture, it's a lost world, it's a wicked, wicked sin filled world that you don't need to have anything to do with it. Cut ties with it. Cut ties with them now. Choose Jesus today. Ask him to come into your heart before it's too late. From the Greek and Roman perspective, that was no kind of God to worship. For those who are being saved because of their faith in Christ, the cross is understood to be God's most powerful act. Amen. God's son did not lose a fight with the Jewish leaders or the Roman government. Amen. He wasn't overpowered or outmatched. That's John 10, 17 through 18 right there, and 18, 6, Matthew 26, 53, if you want it. God the Father sacrificed his son Jesus for human sin. Jesus, in spite of limitless power and authority, gave up his life to cover the sins of those who were perishing. Those who trust in Christ understand that without that powerful act, we would be lost and without hope. Can you imagine not having the cross, not having Jesus, his blood, redemption, forgiveness. Imagine that. Do you know how scary that is? That's the scariest thing in the world. There's nothing scarier. The only thing I can think of right now would be the verse that says, if you're not saved and he, he turns his back to you and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. You workers of iniquity, that right there, him turning his back to you, that's eternal darkness because he's the light, right? John 14, 6, on the way, the truth, and the life. Well, the life, but not the light. He is the light and the life. <laughs> he has many names, but you know what I'm saying? It's very scary. Uh, you, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be a tribulation saint. You want to have the Bible come alive right now. That's my message to you today. Don't be confused if you're a Christian and say, well, well how come none of these people understand me? How come none of these people understand me? How come everywhere I go, I just, I just feel like a weirdo? You know, I feel like a freak. Well, be a Jesus freak like me. Be a slave to Jesus. That was yesterday's video, right? The scariest thing I can think about is him, him turning his back and not understanding the cross or having a chance at eternal life or forgiveness. We are sinners. We, we have to have him. Imagine the love that God had for the world, for us, and we don't deserve any of it. He sends his own son to die. And they didn't just kill him. They tortured him and beat him. And then they crucified him. It, it was a gruesome murder. Don't you understand? Somebody died for you. But you're not going to understand any of this stuff unless you ask him to come into your life and save you. You don't receive the Holy Spirit unless you do that. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is a person? He's a part of the triune God. God, Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. Those are three separate entities, but they're the same one. You're not going to understand that if you're lost. You can read any book, you can go to any college and obtain any degree in this place, and you'll never get it. It's just like this world attempting to copy the human soul. You can't. That's been one of Lucifer's goals, in my opinion, for a long, long time now. You're not going to be able to do it, are you? He's good. He's here. I'm his messenger. 
He is the light. He's your life. He's the way. He's your redeemer. Choose him today. Listen to what it is I'm telling you. You know that one of these videos soon is going to be my last video. I care about you. Choose salvation today. Don't be a tribulation saint. If you're tired of reading the Bible and it not making sense, choose Jesus today and accept him. Ask him to come into your life. Then you'll be able to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. Then it'll start making sense. Then you can get your life straight. Then you can get back on track. It all goes back to love. So with that being said, I love you and I miss you and I'm praying for you. If the rapture isn't a few moments from now or tonight or right now, like I wish it would be right here at the end of the video, you do what we always say over here. You keep looking up and we'll see you up top.